Okay, so I know some of you are out there are following all the conspiracy theories over, you know, Wuhan and uh, conspiracy theories over, you know, politics and conspiracy theories for everything. Here's my conspiracy theory. The evil cabal of scooter salesmen in the world have combined over the last year to try to sell me a scooter. I mean, they looked through my computer screen and they said, okay, that guy is prime for a midlife crisis. You know, now, but he doesn't look like he's got the money to buy, you know, some sort of $200,000 sports car so he can try to go impress 18-year-old girls. So we can't go with that. What can we get? Oh, scooters. We'll get him with scooters. And we'll start showing him scooters and get him to look around and find them and get kind of really a little bit obsessed with them. That'll work. And you know, he's a fat guy. He's a fat guy in a scooter. He'll fit the stereotype. It's amazing. It's 100% fit. Let's see if we can get him. And, you know, then, of course, they arranged for me to be locked down at home at least three times because of covid And they keep showing these things to me. And I have come within a hair's breadth twice, twice, of buying one of these things. And now I'm going to talk about, talk it out with y'all. And, of course, that means once I've talked out my obsession, there's no way I'll buy one afterwards. Because, you know, I don't really need one. I just think they'd be cool, right? Uh, so let's talk about it a little bit. Uh, here's what you see normally when an American thinks of a scooter. Now, of course, we're not thinking... Talking about those things that are in cities where you hold on a little pole here and it's like an electric scooter. You can just kind of stand there and it rides you along five miles an hour down the road. No, we're not talking about those. We're talking about the sit-down scooters, right? And this is a Vespa sit-down scooter. Uh, this is the best of the best of the best of the best, at least for this model, this kind of uh, form factor, right? Scooters, apparently, as best I can tell from looking through the histories and that, are... Things that uh, were developed after World War II as a cheap manner of practical transportation. So, they're fuel efficient, they're comfortable, surprising you know, to drive, and most of them have a lot of storage capacity, right? Like this Vespa here, look, underneath the seat there's supposed to be good storage capacity in there. Good, really good storage capacity on a scooter means two full-size helmets will fit in there, right? I, you know, uh, but uh, you always have to be careful. They always fudge on what they're talking about, the storage space in the scooter. But, you know, that's that's good storage capacity. You know, you see on the back, there's a rack. You can put uh, a bag there. Or, you know, obviously, a lot, well, a lot of them come with, like, a, a big plastic container back there, you know, a suitcase, basically, that you can attach on. And on the front, some se several of them have, like, this one, a rack on the front, so that you can, you know, put another little bag there. Beyond that, you know, the step-through model here, you, they've all got a step-through, not all of them, but the, at least the smaller level ones have step-throughs, which means you don't have to leap your leg over like you do on a motorcycle. You just step through it, sit down like you're sitting on a chair, right? Uh, you don't use your legs for driving these at all. It's all done by your hands. So you, you just they just sit there behind that shield and are kept safe and comfortable. Um, but in the middle of that, you can put a couple, three more bags. And a lot of them have on this front column, they have a hook there so you can you know, hook one more bag on. It's really, like I say, it's a practical thing. Uh, you know, initially built to be inexpensive. Nowadays, they're more expensive. Uh, but, uh, you know, initially built to be a really inexpensive thing. And fuel efficient and all that, pretty good. Th pretty good idea. The uh, uh, you know, like this form factor is the Vespa, right? Like I said, this is what everybody thinks about. Uh, Lombretta is another version of this that's out of Italy as well, uh, but uh, it's not quite as top of the top of the top like this is from Vespa. Now the difference in a Vespa is like almost all scooters have a metal frame. But most of them have plastic around the bumpers and the engine protection and all that stuff. It's plastic. Vespa's not. The whole thing is one molded metal frame, you know, and all that, and fenders and all that. It's, it is 
a really high quality product, which, you know, if you can afford to pay extra for a scooter and you like this form factor, this is what you want, right? And now, uh, that's not what I want. I don't really like this form factor. And I'm going to show you the five or six I really do like. And only one of them fits in this form factor. And the main reason it's even in the list is because it's available locally and it's very practical. That's it. You know, not because I like the way it looks or anything. So let's start out. And we've seen what their basic form factor is. There are many motorcycles, uh, smaller than a regular motorcycle, and, you know, smaller wheels, smaller everything. Uh, but they're also built to be very practical, right? Now, they have different engine sizes, and the ones that you've probably run into the most have been the 50 cc's. 50 cc engines that top out at about 35 miles an hour usually have a restrictor on them even to keep them below 35. They are around because we, if you're living in a city, 50 cc is fine. It moves a little bit faster uh, than somebody, you know, a young male could probably run, right? Um, and they're used for deliveries or, you know, if you're just you know, driving six walks to, or driving six blocks to work and back or five blocks to the little grocery store and getting a little bit of stuff, they're great, right? They're fine for that sort of thing. Um, so, you know, they're, they're good there, but they're really slow and they really don't have much power in that engine, right? So I'm not even thinking about getting a 50cc. Oh yeah, they're also done, and people like them because in a lot of places, you don't have to have a motorcycle license to drive one of them. In a lot of places, 50 cc's, some states, you don't have to get, even get the doggone moped or scooter license or registered or anything. Right now, Virginia's changed that like two or three years ago. I think you now have to get them registered. Maybe you have to get a special plate. I'm not sure about that. And you have to have a picture ID, which I think has to be a government picture ID, but not a driver's license. So, you know... They, for a while there, they were booming everywhere because people who had their license suspended would want to get one of these to drive around, right? Uh, but I'm not going to concern myself with 50 cc's or 100 or 125 cc's. That's not really where I'm interested in. The first place I'm going to start is 150 cc's. Now, if I'm buying something at this lowest scale, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to buy a mainland China scooter, Right? If I'm buying at this low a scale, I'm going to buy cheap, right? And I'm going to buy something that I plan on after I get used to driving around on one of these and get my balance and figure out what I'm doing that I'm going to get rid of and trade up for something that's from Taiwan, maybe even Japan, where there's much higher quality, right? So, and a higher CC. So, at this level... I would probably look, as best I can find research-wise, for something made by a company called Zenen, Z-N-E-N. -E the best of the worst, right, which means they're probably the best of the mainland China uh, scooters, and they're sold through various companies in the United States. I think uh, Amigo is the one I've looked at a lot, uh, SRS, I think is another one, and Wolf Motor Scooters, I think, does it too. Uh, they rebrand them. You know, they stamp a different name on them, and that company sells them. Uh, and these level, at this level, you know, you can get these sent to your house, right? These companies that work with Zenen will send the scooter to your house pretty much fully put together. You have to put the battery in, and you have to, uh, the one that I saw, one couple I've seen, you have to put on the side view mirrors, right? Battery in the side view mirrors, other than that, it's good to go, right? You're going to want to check the fluids, of course, where you start it, but good to go, right? Uh, not a bad deal. You can't get this on higher level scooters, right? I don't know why you can't get it. Well, I probably do know why you probably can't get it on higher level scooters because they sell through affiliates and or whatever, and so they can't, you know, people have territories that they work in and, and therefore no shipping, right? But... Um, you know, these lower level ones you can. And here is the Amigo Warrior, right? This, 
I gotta say, I don't like the looks of this sucker. Uh, I don't think it probably has much storage, although what I've seen says that it has good storage underneath the seat. I'm iffy. I gotta say, I'm real iffy on that. Uh, it has, you know, I'm sure it has adequate enough storage for a little bit of stuff. But the only reason I would buy this is that it's thirteen hundred dollars, one hundred fifty cc's, thirteen hundred dollars, and I figure that after you know I drive this around for a month, get pass my test for the motorcycle license because this is going to be fairly should be fairly easy to drive through obstacles and stuff, right? Then at one hundred thirty at thirteen hundred dollars. I can give it to Goodwill or something because you are not going to trade in a mainland China scooter for any kind of amount of money. You might as well figure it's going to go to Goodwill or you know your yeah your you know a kid or some friend of the family or something, right? You know if you trade in and you get more than two hundred fifty dollars, heck, if you get two hundred fifty dollars, probably a miracle. But the price is what draws me to this one. Uh, and the fact that it's easily, I can just get rid of it afterwards and get a good scooter uh, after I've figured out what I'm doing. And this is the 150 that I'm really kind of interested in. I like the form factor on it. This is called the uh, Rover by Amigo Rover. I think there's a model that's almost exactly the same thing. I'm sure there's some differences, but almost exactly the same thing from SRS called the Ruckus, right? Both of them go for somewhere between $1,900 $2,000, figure $2,000, uh, and can be delivered to your door. Nice. Uh, I like this form. I think it looks pretty good. At least in the matte black, I think it looks pretty good. You can get it in glossy black, not much worse. You can get it bright orange. Well, I don't know why. Maybe if you're going to use it for delivery vehicle or something. And then you can get it in Army Soldier Tan or Army Soldier Green. You know those... Uh, Plastic Soldier used to be able to buy at the grocery store when you were a kid. Those colors, right? I think it looks god-awful ugly, but somebody must like it because they sell it. But the matte black looks fine. I think it looks pretty cool. You're supposed to, you know, that back seat folds up, and you can put, uh, you know, milk crate or something there to store it, things on it. Uh, you can put, you know, like I would think about putting a military duffel bag, you know, those two duffel bags on there. Probably provide you with a goodly amount of storage. Uh, obviously, on the front, you could probably put a little bag between those two bars right there. But, uh, you know, that's that's what you're looking at there. And, let's see, the Rover has 6.3 horsepower. So, you're not looking at something where you're going to go, vroom, vroom, zoom! You're going to go, vroom, vroom, right? Um, and, yeah, it may get up to 60 miles an hour if you really, really push it and you weigh like 100 pounds, and you really, really push it, you might get it up that 60 miles an hour. But of course, that'd be like running your car at, you know, 140. You know, not advisable, particularly not for long periods of time. So you probably don't want to do that. This would be a fun thing to drive around, get used to, take around town. And then when I got really confident, move on to something that was more, you know, more acceptable, more adult, more useful on longer drives. Um, I don't think this thing gets me, like, this thing gets me fine if I drive from where I live into Kingsport, which is the next city over, uh, 15 minutes away, 10 minutes away, right? And I put around in Kingsport, this is great. If I try to drive this to where I go to work, which means I drive an hour north over mountains, one big one in particular that just keeps going up and up and up and up, at Big Stone Gap, Virginia, I am thinking that this thing, no matter how hard I push it, probably is going to be going five miles an hour when we get to the top of that mountain if I'm not walking next to it pushing the dang thing, right? That's just where it is. So, uh, kind of fun to put around. If you live in an urban environment, this is probably a blast. If you live in a rural environment like I do, uh, you know, particularly one where there's mountains. You know, it looks fun. It'd be fun to put around town in, but you ain't going too far on it, right? I don't think you're doing long-term travel on this anyway, long-distance travel on this anyway. Uh, I don't think you should really do that until you at least get to the next level. But 
it's there and it would be fun to put around town if you live in, in, in a city. I've come that close to buying the Rover. It is a, uh, you know, I like the form factor. The price is pretty decent. Zanen has a decent enough reputation. Uh, and I'm willing to take the 10% chance, chance that it's not good uh, because it comes from a mainland China company, uh, which is a lot better than a lot of mainland China companies, believe me. For the price, right? The price is just is right. Uh, came that close to buying it one time, and then stopped myself just at the end. I had all the information filled out, ready to just had to hit that button and went. Yeah, let's put it off for a while. We got time. It's not going to be any kind. Of, you know, we're in February. I'm not going to be riding this thing anytime soon. So let's hold off for a little bit and see. Uh, you know, who knows. Come March, folks, you may see me putting around on one of these things. Now, the next one is going to be the, uh, between 150 and 200, there's another layer, right? Uh, some of the, some of the companies call their things 170s there. Some of them call them 200s. I think 170s are fairly accurate because almost always the CC at this level is somewhere between 160 and 170s, right? Uh, the ones that call them sort of 200, that's misleading because they are not, I've not seen a single one of them that's anywhere near 200, right? Uh, but here's, I've seen a number of different form factors here, a couple of different form factors here. Not really impressed at this level. Uh, you get more horsepower. Here, for instance, is the one that I have looked at. Not really thrilled by it. Again, it's a form factor I don't like. This is the like. 200i from Kimco. Now Kimco is a Taiwanese company, which means we're moving up levels of you know of quality here, and you're paying a little bit more for that. It is a $2,850. I'm sure a little bit extra for whatever else the dealer is going to charge you for, but $2,850 for this is actually a little bit cheaper than some of their 150s, right? Than Kimco's 150s. Um, Supposed to be a really solid vehicle, lots of storage. It comes with that container that's attached to the back. Storage underneath the seat, you know, place down. It's it's got the step through, so there's place to put stuff there. Uh, it is theoretically a really practical, pragmatic vehicle, right? Uh, if you're driving around town, uh, it should do you really well. Uh, the uh, and the other thing for me is. That the only person in this nearby who sells scooters is a guy like 15 minutes from my house. And he sells Kimco's and he's got this on the floor. And as much as I don't like it so much, sometimes you have to do the practical thing. Okay, so now we've gotten past the practical, pragmatic one at 200, the, the like 200i. Uh, and then we get into the 300s, where there's uh, more power, where they claim that the 300s can actually get to the point where... It's, this is the first one where you could really get on the interstate and actually do something. Uh, they're supposed to get up to like 80s, 90s miles per hour. And this is the SYM Citycom S300i. This is the one that I really like and would like to buy... But there's nobody that sells it within five miles, five hours where I live, right? And nobody will deliver. They will not ship to me. So, I can either go to Charlotte, North Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia, or Columbus, Ohio, all of which are somewhere, let's say, average five-hour trip. Uh, some of them are a little bit shorter, some a little bit longer. And go buy one of these, but I have to have a truck or a trailer to bring it back joy of joys, and so that's kind of been a stopper so far. But I like this one. At this level, a lot of them, the step-through disappears, but it's still got a step-through here. It is, a, I like the way it looks on the front. It's got that pinched alien uh, bug uh, look that a lot of them have, a lot of motorcycles have. Uh, it's got a just good look to it. And from everything I can tell, looking at the information, it is a solid scooter. Now, it is uh, 
$5,200, right? Uh, you can find a little bit cheaper advertised some places, but, but $5,200 is what I see most of the time. Actually, while they call it a 300, uh, it is actually 278 cc, and with that comes 27.9 horsepower. Again, you can take this on the highways and interstates, and I think you're going to be okay. I think you'll be okay getting this on the interstates. You know, you're not going to want to run at 80, 90, 80 or 90 miles an hour like they say it can, but if you run this at 60 for a while as you're going down the road for a couple hours, you should be okay, right? I think this is the first one where if I bought this, I wouldn't just be buying it as a beginner, uh, you know, something to train up on. This would be, here's my cycle for the next little, for years, right? So that's what that is. Uh, and like I said, I really like it. I just can't get one. There's none, nothing. Nobody around here has got this thing. Uh, and so, I mean, there is a, Kimco version, which I could probably order through my local guy, uh, but I really don't like it. I don't like the look of it. Uh, it's supposed to be okay. And I could go with like Yamaha X Max, which is the, you know, the one everybody talks about at this level. Uh, but then you're looking at a lot more money. Again, an X Max, I think, is like almost $6,000. So I'd like this. I really like this. If I can figure out how to get this city comp, you're probably going to see me putting around on it, right? Um, and it's going to be my bike for a while because I ain't spending that much money on a motorcycle again or a scooter again. And then there's this. This is the Bergman 400. This is the second one I came really, really close to buying. This is from Suzuki. Lots and lots of people like these and think they have a really good reputation that they really, really run well. Um, now, and they come with a lot of perks, right? Like the windshield goes up and down. They're supposed to ride a lot smoother than everything else. They're supposed to have all sorts of different things on them that you don't ride. And other ones, luxuries that you aren't going to find others. I don't know them all so much because I've not been riding a whole bunch of scooters, really, so far. But, I, you know... This was, you know, this is like, there are BMWs and stuff like that, but uh, this is the one I, I see a lot of people talking about as kind of class of the class, right? Uh, it is 399 cc, solid, solid, awesome scooter. And the local place in Johnson City, Tennessee, which is about 45 minutes down the road from me, had one up on their site, uh, a couple years old, and they were selling it, and I was like, fine. I send them an email saying, hey, send me the quote and send me uh, how much it would cost you to deliver it to me. And the salesman didn't even send me a quote. He just sent me something saying, we don't deliver. If you want a quote then it, and you're going to come pick it up, ask me again, I'll send you a quote. Okay, you know, I know dealers deliver. I've prosecuted people who have gotten dealers to deliver vehicles to them that they then stole, right? I know they deliver, uh, but I guess that I wasn't considered a, a customer that was valuable enough to do that. And mind you, the salesman appears to have been right. He didn't need me because I checked in a couple days later or about a week later, and it was gone, right? It had sold. So people like these and people buy these, uh, particularly if you can find them at a decent price. But I won't be, probably. Uh, not unless somebody comes to me with a really good deal and says, yeah, we'll get it to your house. Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying, if anybody's trying to take that as an offer in a contract, acceptance is not allowed here. Um, I'm probably, like I said, if I can get the CityCom, that's where I'm going to go. If I can't get the CityCom, you may very well see me putting around on the Rover. Uh, just for the fun of it, right? And that's about it, folks. Uh, I'm not going to do another one of these about scooters unless I actually get one. And then you'll start seeing me, you know, this is me putting around a scooter. Maybe, maybe I'll be one of those guys who gets a little camera that hangs off their neck or their chin and, and sits there and rides around and pontificates about things, right? Well, let's talk about Pope Francis's stance on blah, 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 you know. While I'm scooting down the road. 
Uh, and there's a number of you who do that with YouTube casts. Uh, but until we get there, I've now looked, shown you all the scooters I'm really interested in and looking at. Um, and if anybody's got any comments, leave them below. Uh, or, you know, just talk to me in person if you know me. Uh, or you can text me at, uh, well, you can, you can message me at, uh, uh um, Twitter, Lammers K, L-A-M-M-E-R-S-K, direct message me. And, uh, you know, I can't guarantee you I will answer all comments and texts and direct messages and all that. You know, I got a day job, folks. This is not a job. This is a hobby. Uh, but if I can, I'll be happy to talk to you. And until next time, Masalama, y'all.